Thanks. Okay. Um, we should not. Rimbal, your voice I can't hear through. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Yes, we can. No, fine. Okay. Thanks. Okay. I would like to uh, welcome all of you on behalf of Sri Lankan Professional Association, as well as on behalf of Sri Lankan IT Professional Association. This was a key initiator for this program is uh, um, our chairman of Sri Lankan Professional Association. He, his main dream was how can we protect our generation from cyber attacks. Today, we, everyone is so excited about securing yourself, securing your door, locking your door. But do you ever bother to think that actually you're sitting on a time bomb, which none of y'all are aware of? Your physical mobile that you carry everywhere, your payment channels and everything is the main threat to your life. Not only for your life, for your kids' life. It is something which is very, very important to open your eyes and look out. I think um, Mr. Dhammika Gamage's key, uh, sorry, says key initiative was to bring in this awareness to our community and secure our community. So taking that into consideration, our president, um, Chamil Mendes, initiated this by inviting one of the key veterans in um, cybersecurity space, Sujit Christie, to this forum and introduce him to us. This is his second session. We were privileged to get uh, into the first session, being in the IT professional community, and he conducted, we got educated, so we are opening doors for all of you. So I would like to welcome um, uh, Chamil Mendes for the welcome note. Chamil, over to you. Before that, I need to remind a couple of discipline. So please keep your mic muted. Whenever you need to raise any questions, please unmute your mic. Before unmuting, you can raise your hand. So we will uh, uh, give us time space to raise your questions. To make it more interactive, don't, because you won't get this opportunity for a person like Sujit Christie to address your key doubts, fear with regard to cyberspace. So keep yourself open, make it more vocal, but make sure you keep your mics muted. And whenever you need, unmute it, please. So, and if you have any questions, please type it. We will take it up as well. Over to you, Chamil. Thank you. Thank you, Dimple. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining the first uh, public webinar organized by Sri Lankan IT Professional Association in UAE for the benefit of uh, our own Sri Lankan community in UAE. Uh, Sri Lankan IT Professional Association was uh, officially formed just six months ago somewhere in April, having the uh, having three main objectives of uh, uplifting uh, the existing of our Sri Lankan IT professionals community and increasing the footprint of Sri Lankan IT professionals in UAE, as well as the supporting Sri Lankan IT companies to come and do a business opportunity, come and find the business opportunity and establish in UAE. Uh, during last couple of six months, uh, we have been conducted a couple of uh, CPDs for our members uh, uh, to, in order to uplift their qualification and experience, as well as we had also uh, done a couple of meetings with Sri Lankan IT companies uh, who are willing to uh, come to the UAE uh, to find the business uh, opportunities. And also we are in touch with some of the key Sri Lankan companies to get some of the deals uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, in UAE. So these are, this is a bit of uh, about Sri Lankan IT professionals and what we are doing at the moment. And uh, today we have a very special uh, guest speaker for the, uh, the cybersecurity session from Sri Lanka, Mr. Sujit Christie. Warm welcome to Mr. Sujit Christie. And 
and a special thanks to Mr. Damika Gamage, uh, who has given us the opportunity to conduct the public uh, uh, webinar for the Sri Lankan community. And this is our very first uh, public com uh, community uh, webinar. Uh, talking about Sujit Christie, and he's a friend of mine, and we used to work together in Emirates Airline in Dubai from 2001 to 2003, and uh, then he went back to Sri Lanka. And uh, Sujit Christie is a governance, risk, compliance, professional, a passionate information and cybersecurity adoption evangelist, and a director with Layer 7 uh, Sergo Consultoria Private Limited. Sujit is the current uh, president of ISC Squad Chapter uh, Colombo and advisory board member of uh, the professional bodies and group CISO, Chief Information Security Office, Officer of John Keels Holdings uh, PLC and many other private and government uh, sector organization in Sri Lanka as well as India. Sujit currently provide uh, cybersecurity consulting and assurance services to clients in various industry verticals and act as the capacity as a group chief information security officer for a large market capitalized company in Sri Lanka. He also regular contributor to the uh, no security column in the Business Times Sri Lanka. He has worked in KPMG in New Zealand, Singapore and Sri Lanka, ECOP in Singapore and India and TVS Net, uh, TVS group company in India. Sujit is a winner of, uh, of the 2013 ISC Squared President Award in Asia Pacific Region and honorary in the Information Security Practitioner category for Information Security Leadership Achievement in Asia Pacific Region. Uh, actually, if I'm talking about Sujit, he has a lot of uh, qualification experience and across the uh, countries, as well as he has a, a lot of long list of his profile. So I'm not going to talk about his all these details. So it is not fair that if I didn't touch at least about his the main qualification and exp expertise. So uh, if anyone is uh, wish, so we can visit to Sujit Christie's LinkedIn profile to get to know about him. And I'm really glad uh, that Sujit is on board with us today to provide his expertise knowledge to uh, safeguard our own uh, community in uh, UA, Sri Lankan community in UA. And this session will be conducted in English. Also, if you have any uh, doubts, any question in Sinhala, uh, Sujit can also speak well in Sinhala and he, un he can understand. But unfortunately, some of this IT security terms you cannot uh, uh, explain well in Sinhala. You cannot directly translate to uh, in uh, Sinhala language. But of course, if you have any any doubt, you can talk about in Sinhala and he can explain even I can help uh, to explain in Sinhala also. And without taking much time, I would like to hand over the session uh, to the Sujit Christi. Uh, and I'm sure, I'm pretty much sure this session would be a very exciting session. And uh, Sujit, over to you. Asa, can you unmute your mic? Uh, Sujit, sir? Sujit, you are muted. You have to unmute. Sorry. Yeah, thank all you. Right. Okay, all right. I keep completely keep forgetting that, you know, I keep talking to myself. No worries. <laughs> right. Okay. So, Ibo, and it's great to be here. And I first and foremost, I want to thank uh, Mr. Damika Gamage and uh, Dimple Chanu for extending an invite and also giving me this opportunity to talk to you about the cybersecurity and the good things and the bad things, right? So, so it, it, there are always two sides to everything. So I, I just want to take you through the slides and I want to ask you this question. Put yourself in all these situations Tell me which is more riskier. Is it riskier to sit under that store? Or is it riskier to go and take a selfie with those bears? Or is it riskier to catch the 
lion's tail or go on a balloon ride or climb a ladder that way or try to feed the crocodile. Which is more dangerous? And you, you can unmute and talk to me. Please unmute and you can provide the answer or you can uh, just type in. So then, well, I can, I'll ask you, I'll start with you. What do you think? Which is more dangerous? Okay. Oh, for me, <laughs> I find yeah. everything looks dangerous to me. Everything looks dangerous. Isn't it? In different, different ways. The yeah. risk can be anywhere. Absolutely. Damika, what do you think? Uh, I do concur with Dimple. This risk is everywhere. The only difference is the, the percentages. So it's it's equally risky every, everything. I mean, there's no place where we can recognize in this frame uh, less Absolutely. risk. Yeah. Correct. You're, you're, you're spot on, right? It's a human tendency, right? If, if let's say, if you all were 30, 40 years younger, Let's say if I were to take you to your teenage days, if I showed this picture and asked you, you what would you have said? Mali <laughs> You know, you would have said, what the hell is this? I mean, this is nothing to be worried about. I mean, look at that guy who is standing on that ladder. Will you do that today? And I'll take my uh, personal experience. Now, when I see my son running or jumping over a barbed wire, I tell him, Buddha, be careful, don't run. But somewhere he has heard me talk about my experience where I had tried to climb over a fence and I actually stripped and fell and I got my whole hand uh, you know, caught up in the mesh. So, so the thing is, we, we have, as human beings, we have that certain comfort or certain aversion to fear. We, we disregard or we ignore. And I'm sure most of you, I'm not sure how many of you in this call are married, but at least I'm sure if you're not married, you would actually have seen small kids. Now, if you take the kids to the park or to any place, what do you normally tell? I mean, if you see them running, or even inside the house, when you see the kids running, what is the first thing you do? What is the first thing you will tell the kids? I mean, you, you guys are free to open, uh, unmute your mic and talk to me. What's the first thing you would do? You don't run. Don't run, right? Stop running. Yeah. Everything we'll say, don't do this, don't do that, right? Everything we start with a don't, it's always negative. And it is true, right? I mean, the, the human mind has no ability to recognize a negative command. Now, whenever you tell the kid, don't run, think about it. Then only they jump. Right? If you tell them, okay, it's hot, don't touch it, go put the hand. Why am I telling you all these things? I'm supposed to be talking to you about IT. Why am I telling you this? What I'm trying to tell you here is, it is a psychological experience. It is the way we perceive technology. And a lot of times we see technology and we do not anticipate or foresee the dangers which are out there. It's the same thing with a knife. Right? You can use a knife to cut vegetables. You can use a knife to cut the meat. At the same time, if you misuse the knife, you can get hurt or you can hurt somebody else. The technology is also like that. Right, so, so moving on, I just want to give you a perspective, right? And the perspective is that I'm going to talk to you about five different things. First thing I'm going to tell you is, you as an individual, what is that you need to do to protect yourself? The second thing you need to always remember, every action you take or do will have an impact in your 
next circle, that is your family, your friends. And the third impact would be to those people with whom you work, your organization. So today we are going to focus about you, about myself. What is that I would do to protect myself? So I'm going to bring up this particular slide and I'm going to ask you, what do you see in the slide? What do you see in the slide? What do you see? Bottles. Very good. Very good. Any other answers? Mobile application. Yes, you're right. So let me let me travel back in time. Right? I've, I've used this slide for almost 10 years now. Same thing I have actually shown. Would you believe if I told you that every time I asked, I got the same answer you gave me? There is no gender differentiation, right? The guys gave me the same answer. The girls gave me the same answer. The men gave me the same answer. The ladies gave me the same answer. Right? So, so if you really look at the the message I want to bring to you is, isn't that that's some sort of an addiction there? Today, how many of you can leave this for five minutes and go out? Even inside the house, how many of you actually, you know, keep it in your pocket, keep it in your hand and walk around? I don't know how many devices you use. I mean, I use so many, right? I mean, there's some more on the other side, right? But our life is revolving around devices. Our life is revolving around applications. Now this dependency on these devices is taking a significant amount of our time to stay focused on this. Do you agree? 90 to 95% of our life is dependent on a device in technology. I, yesterday or day before I was talking to Chami Wang on Asia. Even if you go shopping, today you have supermarkets where you know, there are no cashiers, everything is technology. You go to a hospital, your pharmacy, it's robotics, technology. Now let me also ask you another question. How many of you can go to bed without a phone, without this? How many of you can go to bed without a smartphone next to you? How many of you can? Or you, I mean, let me put it this way. If there's anybody in this, session who doesn't take the phone to the bed, you can unmute your mic and say, yes, I don't take the phone. Or can I assume that there are about how many? 36 yeah, actually, people? I, I don't uh, bring it to the phone, bring it to the bed because I have been uh, practicing it forcefully uh, because I couldn't sleep. Otherwise, I mean, having the device won't get us to sleep. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, so there are, there are two things which can happen. So when you, when you take the device into your bedroom, it can disturb your sleep patterns as well. And the other thing is, when you, when you turn off your lights and you start looking at the screen, the blue light in it will continue to keep you awake. So you, you need to you know, take that hard call and say, hey guys, I will go to my bedroom and sleep without the device. But some of you may say, hey Sujit, I mean, I work 24 hours in the office and there could be calls. Yes, it can be, 
but then keep it in a slightly far away place so it can ring so that at least you can hear it ring so you can go and answer it. So sometimes you might say, hey, it might disturb the other people in the room. But just imagine if you had a landline. It's the same thing, isn't it? The, before the advent of all the smartphones, we were depending on only on the landlines. So that would anyway ring. So, so the other question I ask is, I mean, sometimes when I ask the same question, uh, I get another answer. People say, I need an alarm to get up. So I take the phone. So these are all, you know, I would say sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's an excuse for us to live with the device. Now, I also have a question here. What is your password? So can you all type your passwords in the chat? How many of you will write your passwords in the chat? No way. No way, absolutely. But maybe because I'm doing this in a virtual session, uh, I, I probably may not be so successful in getting the answers from you. But if it is a physical session, I guarantee that at least two or three people would definitely give me the password. And you know, you know, I, I've been successful in soliciting the passwords. Right, this is the password becomes the key to everything. Now I'll tell you why passwords are important. So when I say Sujit Christie, and I want to access an application or access a web portal, I use my email ID. So how will any of these systems know that I'm so and so? It is only when I type the password because password is something which you are supposed to know, only you are supposed to know, nobody else. Now, the, the, sad, the, the, the negative thing about the password is like, I mean, if you have a key, let's say your car key or your house key, if you can't find it, you know, it. okay, I can't find the car key. You would ask somebody at home, did you see the car key? And then somebody would say, I saw it in the sofa and it is there, or it is on the dining table, something. But when you lose your password, you will never know about it. And nobody is going to come and tell you that you, you lost your password or that they stole your password. So it's easier to lose the password. Now, I was doing a similar session about in 2012, this was in one of the universities and I had my, both my sons also sitting there in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the room. So they were also listening to this conversation. So I was talking about passwords and I was telling them the importance of keeping the password safe and the importance of not sharing the password. So a couple of days later, I get a call from my wife saying, you know, we have a problem. I asked, what is the problem? Because the small fellow has changed all the passwords and he's now not letting his mother <laughs> access any of these things. So I had to get into a call and I asked him, you know, why have you done this? So his answer was, you, you spoke in that seminar where you said passwords have to be secret and it should not be shared. So I've changed everything. It's a positive thing, right? I mean, it's a good thing he did. But we as parents, right, as, as adults, having young kids do that, it is a big challenge. So I was, actually, I had to tell him, you are a child, you're, you're still being taken care of by us. So it is only right for you to share the password with us. So we had to find a reason to tell him why he had to share this password with us. Because he said, okay, you, you're not in a position to make your own food. You're not in a position to make a living for yourself. So we earn, we feed you. So in the same way, we need to take care of you. So password is something which should, should be with the parents and you, know, you will only get to use it. Now, today, most of your children, young ones, they, they are on 
on the internet all the time for various reasons, for studies, for, uh, you know, to play games and various things. How do you actually manage your relationship, right? Now, so I was actually reading a survey a couple of years ago where they say 70 to 80% of the children, they hide their activity on the internet. So it's a big challenge, right? I mean, it's a big challenge for parents and adults. So one of you said that you don't take the mobile phone to the bedroom. The same way, right? I mean, what we have done at home is that we do not allow kids to take the, the devices to their bedrooms. So we keep the TV in the living room. All the devices are used in the open. So nobody gets to you know, keep anything in the corner and do anything. Because when, when somebody is using a device, you also get to see their behavior. So I'll come back and talk about uh, the, the, the problems, the challenges which the kids face while using technology. But I just want to revolve back to the password. So I also said that if, if, if somebody loses their password that they will never, not even know. Now, I want to ask you, how many passwords on an average do you have? Or let me rephrase the question. How many applications on an average do you use which require a password? Can we, can we get you guys to either unmute and tell me or can you type in the chat so I can see? How many applications do you use which requires a password? Janaka, 50 plus. Marsha, over six plus daily. Ten. Ten plus. Right, so, so while, we are, while you keep doing that, let me also ask you. You may be physically accessing your home, your car, your office, and various other places. How many keys do you have? How many keys do you use? Okay. Huh? If you, let's say home, car, and the office, minimum three keys, isn't it? No, I, I was actually on a business trip to Delhi. And I, I had the opportunity of staying in that place. And the, when I went there, I also realized that there were a lot of Sri Lankans living in the same hotel. And it was 90% of the people who were Sri Lankans, and most of them were known. So I went for a breakfast meeting. I came back and I was actually meddling with my mobile phone, got into the lift, stepped out of the lift. I turned right, went to the door, I opened the door. And when I opened the door, there was somebody standing inside the room. And he looked at me, I looked at him, and we both said hi. And then I asked him, what are you doing inside my room? And then he goes on saying, excuse me, Sujit, this is my room. And then he, he very politely told me, Sujit, your room is on the other side. So instead of turning right, you should have turned left. So I apologized. I felt very bad. I felt embarrassed. I quietly walked out and went to, the, went to my room. So on the way out of the hotel, I went to the lobby and I told them something like this happened and I was able to use my key and I was able to open the other room. So the receptionist, uh, all of them, I mean, the people who were standing in the reception, they all smiled at me and they said, sir, you are a regular guest. We gave you the master key. So which means I had access to almost any room in that hotel. Now, the question I have, I mean, you don't have to answer me on the chat or anything. Some of you said that you have more than five applications you access. Do you have that many passwords or you have one password which you use in all these applications?
few right. passwords. Right. So, so good. So I, I see that many passwords, right? So all I'm asking you is, do you have one-to-one -one passwords? If you have 50 applications, do you have 50 passwords? No. Okay. So we, 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 you, we all need to acknowledge that that is a problem. Now, let me also guess, right? Now, today, when I talk to somebody and ask them, what is your password? Somebody might say password one, two, three, hypothetically. And sometimes the application will say that you need to have complexity, numbers. So you would use all that, right? Within that password. So instead of an A, you will use an at sign. So S can be a dollar sign. W, O, O will be a zero. So you have a number, you have special characters, everything in it. You still meet the password quality requirement. But the question is, when you change the password, let's say after 30 days or 45 days or 90 days, you've got to change the password, what will be your password? So sometimes I give this example. Your first password is password one, two, three. What will be your next password? Come on, guys, make a guess. Three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a sequence. Absolutely, right? And, and I know people, they change the, they create a password in January. So it says password January 2021. So next month when they have to change it, it's password February 2021. So how difficult is it for somebody to guess the next password if they know that this was your old password? I'm not sure whether you have received any emails which actually gives out your password, right? Saying, we have discriminatory evidence that you've been involved in certain activities and we will disclose this information to your friends in WhatsApp or email or whatever. But in order to prove that we have this information, they will say, this is your password. And a lot of times when you look at the password, you know this is the password you used. And sometimes I've had people who call me and say, you know, I've got this email and it says, you know, that, uh, that they have pictures of me or pictures of my family. So I ask them, how do you know that it's your password? And somebody, someone, someone will tell me, Sujit, that's my daughter's name. That's my son's name. That's my, you know, my mother's name or father's name or boyfriend's name or girlfriend's name. So these are all easy to guess, right? So the, the point what I'm trying to emphasize here is that today we have come to a stage where you can use a multi-factor authentication. Right? Most of the applications have the ability for you to use a multi-factor authentication. So if I were to show you, right, I'm going to use my camera to show you, right? It's something called an app authenticator. Can you see this here with a padlock? Can you see that? Is that clear now? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So you can download an app authenticator. There is a, there, there's one from Google, there's one from Microsoft. Now, if I were to activate it, now can you see? It says I need to use my fingerprint for me to unlock this. Can you see this? Yeah, I can see this. So I need to use my fingerprint. If you can see it here, I'm using it. Now it opens up. Right, and then it shows all the accounts which I have. Now, if I were to go into this one, it creates a random numeric number. Can you see this here? Yes. So every time I log into LinkedIn, it allows me to feed in this number. So what does that mean? If somebody is trying to break into my LinkedIn or my email, it will always prompt me to provide that number. 
So I can actually block this from here. Now, some, some of the banks actually give you these tokens. They used to give those tokens. Today, it is all app-based. So if you're using Gmail, if you're using Outlook, if you're using Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and there are so many other applications, they are all enabled with this multi-factor authentication, which means you can use your password and also this application. Some of the applications can be configured. You don't need to use a password. So the moment you type your username, you will get an alert on your device. And it'll ask you whether you want to approve it. If, you, if it is you who is actually accessing it, you can approve it. If it is not you, you can decline it. So, so did, you, did you learn something on that? Some of you may be familiar with this, but this is something I encourage you to uh, implement so that it gives you protection. I'll tell you why you need to be paying a lot of attention to this. If you were to reset your bank account password, where will that change password uh, alert go to? Where will it go? If you request for a password reset, where will you get the notification? To your email. To your email, right? So it will go to your email. Let's say you have an application. Let's say your LinkedIn or your Facebook, you want to do a password reset. Where will that alert go to? Your email. That will also go to your email. So what is that you need to protect? Your email okay. has to be protected, right? So another thing, if you're using an email for serious stuff, let's say banks and various important things, keep that separate from all the places where you would go and subscribe for information. Isolate these two. So that you don't use the same bank account, the email ID, which you use to the bank, and also where you go and you know do your Amazon or your IKEA or anything of that sort where you subscribe, or even to newspapers. Because the attackers, when they gain access to these usernames, like the email IDs, they are going to use bots, automated technology to try and simulate your passwords. And if your password is password one, two, three, four, as somebody wrote, wrote it down, oh, how difficult is it to break into? But as color, you can go in, right? So, so it's very, very dangerous. So if you look at this, this is on a lighter note, right? So every time your password gets hacked, you can't be changing your dog's name. So which means what is your password? It's your dog's name, right? So, so, so spend a lot of time trying to understand what your password is. Another thing which you probably are looking at is in terms of remembering passwords. How many of you can remember all the passwords? You may not, right? So sometimes you may write it. Write it down somewhere. But if you write it down, keep it in a safe place. Because I know some people, they, I, I don't know whether you all use some app called TrueCaller. Do you all use TrueCaller? Yeah. Right. And just imagine what happens with TrueCaller, right? If somebody goes and says, uh, my bank account number, PIN. My email account, PIN. My Facebook ID, PIN. It's all a contact list, right? So it's when you use TrueCaller, your, all your data will get backed up to the TrueCaller cloud. So whoever has access to, they will have all their details. So if you, if you have done it, if any of you are in the habit of doing it, the first thing you do today, as soon as the session is over, is to go and reset all those passwords. You need to do that. Because it is convenient, but then at some point in time, you find that this information is getting synced to some other place. And you have no idea you know, what goes on. Because 
Very rarely the attackers will hijack your account. Most of the time they will stay there until you change the password because they're just trying to read all what the things you do. So even if they have to reset your password or even let's say an authentication code comes into your email account, they still have access firsthand. They don't need to call you and tell you to give you the code. They can get it themselves. Right, and I just want to quickly spend a little bit of time here on this particular one, where, where we're talking about credential stuff. So you can see that about 1.4 billion passwords are already found in the underground. Right, even that password one, two, three, four is also there. Right, so so every every password which they can think of, which has been hacked, it is available. Now your challenge and my challenge is not to have in a password which is in that one point four billion uh, passwords. So if you look at uh, this one, right? So so they have one point four billion passwords, if they know the username, they can attempt using that 1.4 billion passwords. And one of them, if it works, they have access to your account. So if you look at the bottom here, how it works, organization is breached, employee login is stolen. If, if it is not your, uh, you know, uh, if it is not your organization ID, it can be your personal ID, right? I mean, LinkedIn was hacked 10 years ago, right? And then Yahoo had issues. So, so every organization will go through that cycle of being compromised at some point in time, but are we aware of it? And do we actually change it frequently? Now, when I talk to the school kids, the question I ask them is, do you guys brush your teeth? I, I, I don't. I, I think I should ask you guys as well. Do you guys brush your teeth? Well, I, I can see only Chamil on the screen. So Chamil, do you brush your teeth? Yes, I do. <laughs> so how many times do you brush? Three times a day. <laughs> three times a day, two times a day? Two times, sometimes, two times, sometimes, three times. Sometimes, three times. So how often do you change your brush? At least uh, three, uh, three months, in three months. So two times a day, and you change your brush once in two or three months. Why do you change your brush? Because it can't use, no? I mean, there's a lifetime for the each and everything. We don't apply the same principles for password, isn't it? Mm. Passwords are also the true. The more you use, the more chances you lose it the more chances somebody will steal it from you. So don't just depend on your password, but also depend on the multi-factor, two-factor authentication, something which you know, something which you have like an app authenticator. And further, I'm putting my fingerprint here, which means something I am. So even if an alert comes into my device, if somebody wants to go and approve it, they can't do it because they, the, the fingerprint is not there on the device, isn't it? So, so that's the safety mechanism you need to have, right? So using employee logins, hacker gains access to other online accounts. So he will, let's say, if I take my mail ID, they will go and you know, use that ID on all the web portals, all the places they can use with the combination of 1.4 billion or more passwords. At some point in time, they will be able to break it. So that is why it is important for you to change the password and you should not use dictionary words. It is easy to guess, right? So I take the Oxford dictionary, upload it to a tool and there you go. So what is the best way of doing it? You can add at random two or three words together so that it doesn't uh, form a particular meaning. You can use special characters, you can use numbers right so so i sometimes say well, you, you you can even think of a song take the first line of the sentence right I, and and i i 
love this song, Piti Kota Pangoni, right? So you, you can think of, right? And you can add the special characters, you can add the new numbers to that particular this thing, right? But don't use Piti Kota Pangoni because somebody has used it and uh, you know probably it is already there. But think of a song which is unique to you or an incident which is unique to you. You can form a sentence. A lot of time people use one, I mean, today, of course, applications don't allow you to use any password less than eight characters. But the longer, the better. Right? So it'll become much more stronger. So one of the things, right? I mean, I, in my experience, what I've seen is, I mean, I was talking to this girl in a meeting and I was telling her, I mean, you can get connected to me with uh, on LinkedIn. And she said she can't connect with me on LinkedIn because somebody has actually logged into her account. So I said, you can do a reset. Then she says, no, Sujit, my email is also compromised. That is one side of the story. And I've had people come and tell me, Sujit, uh, you know, somebody is pretending to be my girlfriend or pretending to be my wife and that person is, you know, flirting with all the men in the country. So I asked them, what really happened? So sometimes they say the account has got hijacked. So the, the, the important thing what you need to remember is password is something which has to be unique. You need to keep it safe and you need to change it often. Like the way I was talking to you about the, uh, the toothbrush. So, so you, you can see, you know, different uh, types of attack. What I've actually given uh, a picture here. They they can use to send marketing material. They can, you know, take uh, your account over, or they can even become a friend and they try to defraud you, or they take your identity. So your password becomes the most important asset in your digital life that you need to keep it safe. So this slide is about, you know, all what I told you all this time, right? You need to make it long. It has to be unique. Lock your mobile phones, right? I mean, I don't know whether you use a pattern. How many of you use a pattern to unlock your mobile. Anyone? Chamil, do you use, do anyone use, have you seen anybody using in your friend circle a pattern, like a shape or something like that? So they do like this? Now no one is using to it. I think it can be easily untraceable. Right, so today most or more everybody must be using a fingerprint. Fingerprints, yeah, and facial recognition. Absolutely. Facial recognition, right? So, but if you're if you're still using a device which has a pattern, you should actually try and avoid doing that. Uh, the reason I'm telling you is, I mean, I had a friend of mine. Uh, he had locked his phone because his kids were playing with it. So the daughter had said, Tati, over the water phone, never the manga, I love it. So he gave the phone to the little one. She takes it, goes in front of the TV, keeps it like this, packed like this. Reflection can see the traces, the fingerprint trace. And the child has been watching the father's fingerprint, the movement. So in the mind, she had a picture. She could see where the, the traces were. She just followed. Not even 10 seconds, she unlocked the phone. Right? So, so if kids can do it, anybody can do it. So it's much more easier, right? So, so try and use, uh, I mean, I of course say if you can use a pin and a, a fingerprint, it would always be better because then you have dual control. But fingerprint is much more convenient. So you need to take that call where you want utmost safety. Then you use dual. Otherwise, you just go with fingerprint. But never share your passwords with anyone. Right? So I spoke about the MFA. 
Okay, so before you go to the next section, there is yeah. one question Please, uh, from Anton. What Please, if, hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Tell me. The, the, yeah, what if the password manager has back it's 20 to, hours. to uh, back door to developer for quality assurance? Anton, <laughs> that's a serious issue, right? So we, we expect people not to have any backdoors in the application. So that, that's something which, which is very difficult for us uh, to determine. But I mean, I, I was actually doing a little bit of search on the password manager. Today, most of your browsers have a password manager. It will prompt you to ask. But every time you want to, uh, you know, read your password or want to see the password, it'll, ex it'll ask you to type in your master password. So you also need to you know, be mindful as to what kind of password managers you use. But everything man-made can be broken. So we, we can only ensure that amount of security, but then if there is a backdoor, then it can be always vulnerable. Not only a backdoor, even if there is a vulnerability, they can still breach it. So, so look at uh, products which are popular in terms of like LastPass and things like that. So it will it will give you in terms of assurance that you know that they have taken the best remedial measures. So here you see different types of application. I mean, mobile phones, right? And uh, Today, today it's mainly you're talking about Apple or Android, iOS or Android. That's that's mostly it is. But not all applications in the App Store is safe. That's a fact, right? So not not everything is safe. Now, one of the things you can do is, as and when you find time, Google and check to see what are the applications which the Play Store has removed recently. They'll give you a list. What are the applications Apple has removed from its store? So if you find any of those applications installed on your device, you should straight away uninstall them. Now, application is a good way for people to do social engineering attack. Now, there, there was this case which happened in Delhi or in, uh, in India, for example. So somebody developed an application which was something similar to a WhatsApp application and it was widely used by the military, the people in the army. So this application had an inbuilt intelligence so which means it, when whenever the person went near certain sensitive landmarks maybe airport parliament railway stations it automatically unmutes the camera the, the uh, you know it opens the camera and unmutes the microphone so that it can listen into the conversation and see what is actually in the vicinity And today, some of these applications have the ability to even trace your activity or monitor your activity. Now, I remember, I mean, if you, if you uh, have time, whenever you have some time, go and look for Uber, search for Uber, Uber-related legal cases in UK or the US. You, you would find that one of the senior executives in Uber told a newspaper, uh, I mean, a, a journalist, that they had so much of information that if that is disclosed, that, that it can even put her family life at jeopardy. So most of these applications have the ability to track your movement. So when you go to the settings of these applications, you can actually choose whether to enable tracking, geolocation, all that can be disabled. 
So you need to make a conscious decision whether to enable certain features by default to be active or you need it only when you need it. Another important thing what you need to remember is today because we have these smartphones, we tend to take a lot of pictures. Right? When we go out with friends, we take pictures. When we go out with the family for our dinner, we take pictures. And most of the time you would find it actually tags the geolocation. So it tags the geolocation, which means somebody who can actually take that picture, they can actually see where the picture was taken and will give the exact uh, long let coordinates. Now, I, I don't know whether this story is true or not, but I remember reading it where this father takes the daughter to the kindergarten. First day at school. So he goes to school just before the daughter gets into the, goes into the gate. Both of them take a selfie. They post together, take a selfie, and he posts it. My darling's first day at school. He comes back to pick the daughter after a few hours. And uh, when he goes to the school authorities and asks them, they say, your daughter has already left. And in reality, what happened was that this somebody who ever saw this picture, they traced the location, they came, and before the father came, they kidnapped the daughter and went. Right. Unverified, but I'm just telling you the dangers out there, right? So, so whenever you post pictures, please ensure that you can remove the geotags or you take pictures without the geotags. It's important. It's for your own safety, your family's safety as well. Now, I just want you to squint your eyes. Just close it. And then if you can just squint your eyes and look at this picture, what do you see? Squint your eyes and see. Can you see what is the picture you see here? What is the image you see? A lady, a face of a lady. Right. So this is a made up persona. It's not a living person. They created this person. And they named this person called Mia Ash. They used a real life profile of a wildlife photographer in UK, used the picture, used the profile, and they had a Facebook profile, Facebook and a LinkedIn, I think, if I remember correctly, LinkedIn. And this person was actually becoming friends with a lot of men. And this was actually targeting the Middle Eastern countries. So, because she is a famous photographer, right? I mean, she, the profile says she is one of the world-renowned photographers. So a lot of people wanted to become friends with her, you know, take get tips for photography and so on and so forth. So she would ask them to send all the questions and return, she would say, I will send you an Excel sheet. You will have all the answers in it. So she will compile all the answers, send it. So when the people open, and she would also say, this, if you want to read the, uh, you know, check the answers, this is better opened in the office. So guys open the document in the office. It had a back door and gave access to the attackers to get into the network. Right, so, so the point what I'm trying to raise is while social media is a good thing, do you know all your friends in your Facebook? Do you know all your friends in LinkedIn? Do you know all your friends in Tinder? Tinder, of course, there's no way of finding out, but do you know all your friends in any of the other Instagram and other platforms? Now, I mean, I used, I used to ask the same question from the children when I talk to them in schools. And a lot of times I ask them, do you know your neighbors? And most of them say, I don't know the neighbors, but then, uh, if I ask them, how many friends do you have in Facebook? They'll give some numbers, which, which is mind boggling, right? And so many. 
Most of them don't even know that. Right? So not everybody who connects to you, to your profile, is not a friend. Cannot be a friend. And so everything you post in the social media platform, especially your personal details, your personal uh, you know, activities. Let's say you go on a trip, you post pictures, you post about your family, you post about your children. You need to be careful what you post. Right, I mean, I do post. I mean, some of you are there in my Facebook, right? Can, can anybody recall to see whether you had actually seen any of my family photographs? I don't think you will see, you wouldn't have seen any, right? Maybe very rarely there could have been one or two, but otherwise you wouldn't have seen any. And even if I post, most of the posts are like two, three months after the incident or after I visited that place. Because sometimes, you know, we have this pressure of saying, I'm in Rome, I'm in Italy, I'm here, I'm there. So you're, you're actually doing live updates. What does that mean to people who is living around your neighborhood? If they are in your network, they know, okay, so-and-so is not there. Which gives access to your property, your you know, personal belongings there, right? So, so they can actually you know, break into your apartments and things like that. So, so be mindful in terms of what you tweet, what you post in your social media platform. And very importantly, Ask yourself whether you really, really need to post this. And today, this has become a major fad. When I say fad, it's a fashion statement, right? I mean, I did this, I went to this hotel, I ate this, all these things. So do you really want to show off which, which can be consumed by a lot of people and probably use it to hurt you in different ways? Or do you want to be very sensitive in terms of what you post? Right? So, so I want you to ensure that you take care of your own privacy. Because there are people whose primary objective is to understand your lifestyle, your patterns. Okay. When you were small kids, your grandparents, your Malatatla would have told you, don't talk to strangers. Matakadu? Huh? Don't talk to strangers. Evagi makia neti ne kaur varit chocolate ya ke ma dunna. Anan kanne paake la kia neti ne. Of course. Right? Kya wot mukadde venni ke la kia neti ne. I still remember my grandmother and my parents would have told me, right? I mean, don't eat anything. Right? Yeah, at this age, right? And she's over 80 plus. She says, even if I, when I meet her, she say, Puta ka urari monari kandu dunnu teva kandu ka. Why? Why do they say that? Because there is always a danger attached to it, right? So, so people can actually give you some biscuits, which is actually, you know, they have put some medicines into it. So you faint, they rob you, rob your valuables. Or when you talk to strangers, again, they will kidnap you. What do people do in real life? In the internet age, what do they do? They talk to strangers. In all this chat platform, what do people do? What do we do? We also talk to strangers, isn't it? But, but we give it a different meaning to it. We say, oh, we are trying to expand our professional network. We are trying to expand our business association. We're trying to expand our you know, relationships or friends and so on and so forth. But sometimes you end up talking to people who you actually are not talking because somebody said, right? On the internet, you don't know whether you're actually talking to a dog or the dog says the other way around, right? People doesn't know that they're talking to a dog. So if somebody is chatting, somebody is you know, getting in touch with you, you better take time to understand who they are and what they are. And a lot of times, right? I mean, sometimes I get invites from people who I don't even know. So one of the things I do is I go and check to see who else is connected to them in their network. 
Sometimes I send a message and I ask them, do you know this person? Sometimes I won't get a response. Call Karna, I think call Karna. Then they'll ask me, where did you see? I said, I saw it in your LinkedIn profile. So and so is connected to you. Then they'll say, oh shit, how do I remove that person? So now they have accepted somebody they don't even know and that person is actually there. So you're actually communicating with a stranger. So you need to be careful who you are talking to and who you are chatting. And this is also true with those calls which actually come to you unsolicited, right? It can be a message which comes to you. Somebody might be sending you a message and say, can you please check and give me the code? Or they may call you and say, I'm calling from this authority, this department or that department, or they may even post as a police officer. Now, if you go to any of these departments, they would have clearly said that the banks would have told you that they will never call and ask you for the password. The same way the police department also would have told you that they will never call and ask you to identify yourself. If they want to talk to you, they will definitely come to your house. They don't have to call you and say, prove your identity by sending you an SMS or a code. Or sometimes they might even you know, call you and say, you buy an insurance for a million dollars for one dollar. Right? I've had calls such as that, right? I mean, sometimes I, I, you know, I've had calls and on the other hand, I call the bank and tell them, you know, there's somebody calling, pretending to be from the bank, are you guys doing any campaigns? And I keep this guy engaged, talking to me. And at some point in time, he will realize that, you know, we've got wind of what he's trying to do. And then they will disconnect. Right. And, and you also need to be careful in terms of your friends, your association uh, with other people. Because when people break relationships, they, they tend to uh, hurt other people. Right? So, so one of the things what people do is they post revengeful comments, right? they troll people. Or sometimes they even post dirty pictures. I mean, recently I had a situation where uh, this girl is in marketing. She, she is, she is, her job is to you know, take calls and give quotations and you know, solicit customers for the organization. Somebody had taken her number and started calling her and started you know, speaking in vulgar terms. They had even posted uh, things on the internet. So when I got involved, she told me somebody had even called her mother. So, so I actually said, okay, give me access to your, you know, your Facebook account, meaning add me as a friend. I want to see what is there in your account. Baladi, two weeks before that particular incident, she has had a birthday and she had posted a picture with her mother, which mother was tagged to the list. Amma ke profile lagda ghi mobile number ka. And these fellows have called the mother and said, your daughter is like this. Girl. Right? So, so you need to be careful in terms of what information you provide in this. And, and always, it is always good to move on rather than try and fight with people. Right? And very quickly, I just want to touch briefly on games. Today, games are very popular. So again, if you're using a device which is meant for banking and various serious stuff, don't try and use the same device for entertainment. As I said, said earlier, some of the applications may be infected. We may not even know. And games are a good place where people can actually infect those and keep it there. Now, those of you who know Angry Birds, Farmville, then football, these are all very popular games. Some of the, these games, you need to pay money and get it. And somebody would actually download a commercially available software and they say you can have a free version of it. So a lot of people, what will they do? They will go and download that one. But what are they downloading? They're downloading a malicious infected software. And the moment that software gets installed on your device, it will start reading your SMS, start reading your emails, it will listen into phone calls, it can activate your camera, it can activate your microphone, it can do a whole lot of things. So, so you need to be mindful in terms of what applications you install. Right? Phishing, 
Miss Chanel, how are we doing on time? How much time do we have? Uh, Sujit, I think we have another 15 minutes. Uh, okay. Right. Take 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I just want to, there are about a few, three, three or four more slides. That's about it, right? So, so emails. Today, the attackers, what they do is they, they have harvested all the email addresses. And what they want to do is they want to send out emails to everyone. In some cases, these emails will go into a spam folder. So if you look at your email application, you will have a spam folder. So all that will go into that. Sometimes genuine emails also will go into it. So, so you are compelled to look at that email, that folder as well. But if there is an email which is you know, showing urgency, they say, okay, your password will expire from this date. Please click on it to keep it active. So if there is, money or if there is a link which they ask you to click on or if they ask you to download an attachment, those are indications that you need to be careful. You should not click on any of those. If there is desperation, there is fear, there is threat, you need to be mindful of it. Now I'll tell you a story which happened uh, during just before the lockdown. There was a small break in between uh, the lockdown and then we opened up in Sri Lanka. So a friend of mine called and said, uh, Sujit, we want to have a quick chat with you. And I asked, what's it? He said, one of his friends had uh, you know, received this email, which says that they've got pictures of him, that if he doesn't pay $1,000 or something, that they will release all the pictures to his WhatsApp group friends. So this guy was really upset. So when this friend called me, I actually asked, <laughs> So my friend was very angry. He said, that fellow is having a trauma and you are making fun of him. I mean, you have to tell me the truth. I mean, did he do it or did he not do it? So they came home. To cut the long story short, I asked him, what, what really happened? So this is what he says. Every morning, while brushing the teeth, he takes his smartphone, puts it there on the mirror like this. And he watches the news. So when, he's, when he told me this, I asked him, are you Bill Gates or are you Sundar Pichai that, you know, that you, you've got to make so much of money or that you've got to listen to all the news? Right? But what this guy does is he gets into the shower, he keeps the phone there, keeps the thing, and he listens to the song while he's having a shower. So you, you can pictureize what actually happened, right? So when this guy was, he was even ready to pay the $1,000. So I said, don't pay. Wait for 24 hours. They've given you 24 hours to pay. So we waited. No mail came. I said, forget it. Go back and change all your password, pay everything and do that. So the point is sometimes they, they take a pot shot at you. That is one side of the story. And I was actually sharing another story with Chamil as well. This happened to one of the IT guys in a large organization, right? He got a Google alert saying that somebody was logging into his account. He has gone back to sleep. This is going to happen around 11, 30 or 12. Next morning, he had a pain. Like he thought it was, he was dreaming. So he wanted to check. So he had gone to the login credentials and he had found that somebody from Dehwala had logged into his account. Login will have come on. And he has, <laughs> the thing is, he has downloaded stuff. Now, when we were having a chat, he's saying, I want to catch that guy. Help me to catch him. I can't do anything. You can go to the police and file a complaint. You know, I found out that you know, this fellow is in Dehwala. I need to catch him. I asked, why are you so desperate? No, he, who, he has my documents. Then I asked him, leave everything on the this thing. You tell me, did you lose anything which you shouldn't have lost? Meaning, did you have any videos or any photographs if disclosed in the internet that will actually ruin your reputation? Then he said, yeah, I think that the piece work, I think what to do. And the thing is, 
he had all this you know personal stuff uploaded and kept in the google cloud so i'm saying don't do it and don't keep things which are very very sensitive in the cloud or even if you have it ensure that it is you know properly protected so it's very very important password again becomes a critical thing right your multi factor authentication also becomes a critical thing now a lot of time when you get an email you need to look at the subject line is it coming from a known party or a known company where you do work or you do business or you are expecting something if you are not if you received something and you are not expecting something don't take a chance right nobody will give you a lottery nobody will give you money for something which you have not worked hard for so always check the subject check to see whether there is an urgency whether there is a threat whether there is a link link to click or an attachment if there is please trash that but if it has come from somebody you know and you think there is something in there if you're not sure pick up the phone and talk to them it's not that difficult right to pick up a phone and talk you don't have to click on an email so please do that so most of the time a message will come there will be an attachment it will when you click on it it will redirect you to a website it's a fake website there will be a form where it lasts for your details like your name your email id your bank account number your pin numbers itne yaad ganna mugut mein right you are given all what you need to give so you have no protection so if there is anything which asks for your personal details ask yourself whether it is true if you are not sure if it is a bank who is asking for it you should call the bank and check right don't don't be in haste to give any information nothing is going to happen same way spyware right i i want to take a moment like i spoke about applications which can have malicious content in the application backdoors they call the spyware right and then today it's very easy to buy spyware from anywhere right i mean you go to the internet it is available so so people can target individuals or even families so if there is anything which you think is suspicious then you need to actually be mindful that you don't click on those or do not respond so so i just want to pause here and want you to want to remind you that your devices whatever you use that that you need to have a a a defined framework as to how you would use right typically i would say don't don't allow or don't take your smartphones to the washroom don't take it to the bedrooms right and then wherever you are sitting and using it you you need to be careful that you don't you know expose that information to anybody else right so this is another scenario where people can gain access to your email people can buy your email id or your password from the hackers because they have already collected that so that's why it becomes more important for you to change your credentials frequently can you see this person the former president of the united states right there are caller id spoofers applications available in the internet this is what actually a lot of people do so they can actually put a number there and pretend to be calling from that number it can be your friend as well or it can be you know they can use my number and call you don't be in a hurry to you know give out any information if somebody is asking it can be even your boss take a moment to see whether it is that voice but again today artificial intelligence machine learning those technologies are available where people can record my voice and speak like me i mean maybe i i think i shared that i mean advertisement with you no chamil like the cadbury advertisement sharukh khan yeah yeah you shared with me maybe maybe you should actually share it with the group right yeah here they have used sharukh khan's voice to promote the local uh, you know small shop retailers they're doing a good thing but they are using artificial intelligence where i can go and say okay i want to promote layer seller let's say if chamil wants to do he wants to promote chamber of commerce he can use the same app same advertisement 
but the names will be different. What I'm saying is, you can people can even go to that extent to fake the voice as well. But if you're not sure, if you're uncomfortable, I think you should disconnect the call and maybe try and call that person back. Let's say if, if you feel that the call which is appearing to be me and you suspect it's not me, you can disconnect and you have my number, you can call me back, right? So when you call me back, I will answer you. It will, you will never be able to reach the attacker, right? You will not be calling the attacker number because he's calling from somewhere else. So try and exercise that practice, right? Wherever you feel you're not sure, you're uncomfortable, disconnect the call, call back again. I'm not sure how, how it happens in the UAE. Because a lot of people use these torrents to download a lot of movies and all this stuff, right? So most of it is actually infected. So while you download the stuff from these sites, they also suck out information from your devices. Now, every time Sri Lanka had a lock, lock, lockdown, right? I mean, I'm taking a Sri Lankan context. A lot of people used VPNs. Some people couldn't live without Facebook, right? So they had to be connected to Facebook. They used VPNs. So the thing what they said was, oh, I was able to bypass Mobitel, SLT, or even uh, Dialogue. And these attackers, actually, they ran a campaign saying free VPNs for Sri Lankans. And when you do a search VPN, these actually these sites actually came on top. So when they connect, install and connect these VPNs, most of them were connecting to malicious websites. You will have access to Facebook, but actually it is terminating in a malicious server. So in the process, it was actually downloading all your spywares, your malwares into your device. So which means, they were able to gain control to your device. Reason I'm saying is because we saw during that time, a lots of people getting infected because we were monitoring, we monitor a couple of networks in Sri Lanka. So, so we were able to see how the victims were communicating with the attackers without their knowledge. When we talk to them, they say, I mean, this thing. Then when we check the device, you know, there are things which are happening on it. So, so you need to be careful when you use all these un, un, uh, you know, pirated uh, software or even download pirate, pirated uh, movies and songs. So always buy legitimate software, legitimate products, which will actually give you a lot of protection for you. Right? So if you back up, please ensure you back up to a good good device, good, uh, you know, maybe something like this, but keep it in a safe place. If you're keeping it in the cloud, please ensure that you're using a solid password and multi-factor enabling it, right? That's very, very important. So Wi-Fi is another point which you probably are using at home. So if you have the ability to change the default settings, you should do that, right? So you need to reset the password so, so that you know that people don't have access to your links so that they, they're not connecting to your access points and then doing anything malicious because if something goes wrong they are actually going to come back to you last but not the least i'm sure all of you travel a lot especially if you're in a restaurant in an airport where do you sit how do you keep your device who is able to see it no, I mean, I, I don't have it in this particular slide. I have pictures where I have used cameras to actually zoom into other people's devices to see what they are doing. So I can even, you know, like you, you there could be cameras which are out there, you're sitting and typing. They can see your keystrokes, your username and the password. So wherever you're seated, whatever you're doing, please look out for the, your environment. If there are any CCTV cameras and if you're seated right underneath, they can actually see your keystrokes and whoever has access to those feeds, they can have access to your information as well. So shoulder surfing, looking at now, if you look at the first picture, he's pretending to be taking notes, but he's watching what he's doing, right? And all of them are like that. So security is all about like a music, right? It's all about notes, right? It's about creating melodies. So you cannot take anything for granted. 
but you need to exercise as much as possible good practices. This is the same thing with your corona or the COVID practice as well. He said, social distancing, wear a mask, sanitize your hands. Same thing for your uh, internet or digital use as well. So use good hygiene practices, which will keep you safe. So if you have any questions, I can take them. Do you have any other any questions? If you have any questions, I'll be happy to take. Any questions, you're all free to raise it. Please do, because even, it's a even, quite... Yeah, even if you don't have a question right now, anytime you need to, you, know, you can always connect with me. Shamil has my local number with him. So you can connect with me on WhatsApp. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. Facebook, I don't go there very often, but I probably go there once a month or so, once a week. So you can always ask me. Dimple, one gentleman, Asanka, wants to ask a question. Yes, uh, yes, I was. Yes, Asanka. Asanka. Uh, Asanka. Uh, good morning, Asanka. good evening, and uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, wherever you may be. Uh, I have a question, sir, Mr. Shujit. That's okay with yes, you? Yes, Asanka. Yep, please it's go a, ahead. It's a two part question, actually, sir. Um, I, I am a third year bachelor's degree cybersecurity student mm -hmm. and uh, I have worked uh, many internships as a threat intelligence officer as well as a cybersecurity analyst mm -hmm. and uh, I have put in a lot of effort to be part of the cybersecurity community mm -hmm. and I have understood that um, there is indeed a big demand for cybersecurity specialists. Yep. However, uh, because of company, you know, the outdated uh, recruitment procedures, mm -hmm. a lot of us won't get hired, um, especially because of, uh, for example, uh, when it comes to years of experience, they ask for about five years of experience for a very entry-level analyst job. Um, that is, uh, as a veteran in the, as the veteran in the community, mm -hmm. what, what would be your recommendation? And, okay. yeah. Is that your question or? Uh, you I have know, a second part as well. May yeah. I ask now? Yeah, yeah, please uh, go ahead. The second part of that would be, uh, I'm really sorry for taking your time. Uh, no, the no, no, not at all. Be, <laughs> the second part of that would be, um, if I come to you for a job interview, right? Mm -hmm. um, you. Okay, if I'm interviewing you, the first thing I will actually look out for is your attitude. Okay. That's fair. I think that's very, very fair. Right. So, so if you if you talk to all the people who actually work with me or who have worked in the past, that is the only thing which I look for. Right. So I always tell them, don't give me excuses. Give me a reason why you can do it. Right. Experience is secondary, right? I mean, I don't claim to know everything. Absolutely. Neither can anybody say that you know these things. And I agree with you, right? I mean, if somebody is asking five years experience for threat intel. That industry alone, or that particular specialization, is not even five years. Exactly, that's the that's the thing. Cybersecurity okay, so itself is not uh, very. Yeah, exactly. So, what I would actually suggest, if you're really serious about getting into this field of information security, look at vendor neutral certifications. Right. So, I, I'm I'm a strong advocate of that, right? Because. Today, if I go to a doctor, one of the things I would look at is, is what is his qualification? Has he done a BBS minimum? Okay. If it is something I want, let's say, if I need uh, you know, help in terms of, you know, if I have to take my wife, I probably would look at a gynecologist. So I would see whether they have specialized in gynecology. Or if I you know, take somebody who needs uh, any help with regards to heart ailment, so I would look for a heart specialist, right? So what I'm trying to say is don't get deceived by those people who say certifications do not give you that experience. Certifications actually give you an insight into best practices. Okay. Right now, for example, I'll tell you an example. We say everybody should you, you know, implement a AAA service, right? Authentication, authorization, audit. Thank you. If you don't know what this AAA is, where you would use it, in real life, 
if you see there is a flaw in it, you will never identify that it has been deployed the wrong way. Very true, sir. Very true. Right. So, so I mean, uh, if I if I were to you know, show this book here, right? This book talks about the best practice. Right? This is a CISD yeah. book, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, when I go to, for an audit, what I look for is okay. Book says this. This is what they are doing. Is there a gap? And that's what we need to know, right? So I encourage you to look at uh, this thing. And, uh, you know, th there is nothing called everybody knows anything or everything. Okay. It's right. a journey. Okay. Have the right attitude to learn. Thank Always you, sir. Thank you very curious. much. And uh, may I ask, are you based in Sri Lanka or are you based in UAE? Uh, I am overseas, sir. I am in Malaysia at the moment. Uh, I'm okay. in South Arabia, but uh, I go. But, I mean, you let me know where, wherever you need help. Right. I mean, so that I is a big thing. That, yes, absolutely. Finally, about it out to me. Oh, yes, yes. Not absolutely. a Kiana, right? I mean, where I mean, even in Malaysia, if you need any help, I can actually get you connected with uh, friends of mine there and see whether you can at least you know get uh, get an entry level job. Thank you so much for this. Right. Firmus, firmus in Malaysia, uh, the people who run that organization. The, the directors of that the, that company and I we work together in uh, oh, wow. Malaysia and Singapore, right? So so yeah. you know, if you need Thank any you help, you let me know. And there are other companies as well, right? So so we can always reach out. Anything That's to help. Good. Anything Thank to help you, the community. Can there. I can I please get your email address or something that I can get in touch with you with? Like a professional yeah, you, uh, you you can actually reach me on LinkedIn. I'm there on LinkedIn. So I'll okay. I'll just type my email ID here. So also, I am currently doing my uh, network plus and security plus. Uh, uh, yeah. Mr. Hansaka, right. would you mind? Uh, this is yeah, a public really forum, so please do not go into private details. Right. Let I'm others really others use the opportunity. Very sorry. Very sorry. Yes. Thank you very much. Time is uh, so I have shared my email ID and my this. You can WhatsApp me, so we can take the discussion offline. Okay. Thank, uh, thank Hasanka. There's a question from Anton. He's, he wants to know what is the most secured mobile banking or tablet to be used in the banking for to banking transaction, whether it's iOS or Android. The further he has gone into the device level and he's asking whether it's mobile or tablet. Anton, brilliant question, right? So I will start off with a negative thought, right? When I say negative thought, no device is secure. How can we make it secure? If you're using Android or even Apple, please ensure you're using the latest operating system. Every time there is a patch update or a version upgrade, you should actually prioritize it apply those patches because those patches are released to address a security vulnerability, number one, or oh, that is number two. Number three, if you're using a, a smartphone or a tablet, irrespective of what version it is, uh, Android or Apple, please ensure that you do not use that for gaming or any other applications which are non-essential. Because you, you could be accidentally introducing another application which can actually start reading your information and all your keystrokes and things like that. So try and you know, isolate. And sometimes you know, people tell me that uh, you know, this is going to be cumbersome. But I think in your own interest, in your utmost security, I think that is a good thing to practice. Right? And always clear the cache. And uh, if, if you have the luxury of taking a backup, back up your data frequently. And then once in a way, you can even go and reset your devices to factory reset and install everything afresh. So these are a few things which, you, which can help you to protect yourself. And uh, was that helpful? Yes, it did. Thank you so much. Right, I think okay. there is a question on antivirus. So don't go for free antivirus. Go for a good commercial uh, antivirus. If you're using, if, you, if it is for your mobile device, look, I mean, there is a product called Lookout. Lookout, 
right? So, so that that works very well. You can uh, you, it doesn't cost much as well. So, so you can actually go for a, uh, a commercial version. Then, of course, the mainstream other products like uh, uh, Kaspersky, McAfee. Then you have uh, other other forms of uh, applications available as well. But invest in a com uh, you know paid version. And if you if you have uh, the option of getting any of these products with the cloud version, you can actually use it in multiple devices. I mean, they have those options as well, right? So you pay for one subscription, but you can use it in multiple devices. So those are things which you can do. Going forward, what I see is that Microsoft Defender is going to become very strong because they understand your operating systems, especially your laptop if you're a Microsoft uh, platform user. So Windows Defender will also do good, but Right now, you have to use, in addition to your Windows Defender, you, you should consider using another antivirus. So I won't name one better than the other. Uh, all of them are good, but at the end of the day, it is our responsibility. What, what we click and how we use it is all dependent on us. So if we go and start surfacing in areas like uncharted waters, you're basically inviting trouble. And one other thing, right? I mean, I also want to, can I just uh, come out of this and probably take you through to another screen? And I think I shared, uh, yes, uh, right, I'll, I'll uh, share my browser here. So if I go to the settings here, right? And if I type this, I'm using Microsoft Edge, right? And if you go to, if you type DNS, you have this option here. Enable this and choose a DNS service provider. The advantage you have here is because typically an antivirus works at an IP layer, layer three, right? And inter internet for it to work, you need to have a resolver service. That is what DNS is all about, domain name service. So if I type uh, an IP address, it has to resolve. If I type www dot something, it has to resolve and give me the response. So when when you when it goes and resolves, the DNS service provider. Now here I have used the Cisco's Open DNS. They have a database of all bad websites and bad IPs. So what it means is when you request or when your traffic goes to this particular site, Open DNS will block it. But if you don't open, you use open DNS, what will happen is it will go to the infected site, it will bring the infection into your machine, and then the antivirus will get activated and then say, you know, there is an infection. So which is better? Open DNS plus antivirus is better. You can actually uh, download for those people who are using it on personal devices. Don't use it in your office devices because then it will become a violation of uh, licensing with Cisco. Cisco has an open DNS free version available for you to use it on your devices. So, so you can download it and use it. Right? What I'll do is I'll share those uh, links with Chamil and Chamil can share it with you. Would that help? Anton? Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Lujit. No worries at all. So Christy, would you mind explaining us this the, you know, the typical jargons in the, the uh, IT industry, because very common, normally, you know, majority common people, they don't understand malware, the torsions or the worms or sort of thing. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so I'll start with uh, virus, right? So, so virus is something which you need to activate. Right, which means you had a click, double click, then it gets activated. So that is what virus is to be. But in today's context, most of it is actionless. You don't need to activate. It happens on its own. So, so it is a verb. It spreads on its own. So you click, you access something, it comes into your device, and it starts to propagate. But if I were to use the term Trojan, Trojan is nothing but a backdoor. So it comes, sits into your device and it allows access to your adversary, meaning 
Let's say if you download an application and if it is infected with a backdoor, whoever created that backdoor, they can actually see what is actually going on in your device. Now, for example, uh, just uh, beginning of this year, there was a company called Workada. They, they had a cloud-based CCTV camera uh, company, right? So, so they, it's a cloud-based uh, company which provided CCTV protection. Now, the hackers actually got into that cloud and they had access to over 150,000 cameras, CCTV cameras. And these cameras were placed in hospitals, jails, schools, including the Tesla manufacturing unit. So what does that mean? They were able to see things in those organizations. So the same way a Trojan would also mean that they will have unrestricted access into your device, into your homes, into your network to see it. So, so you need to be more careful about what you actually install. Right. So, so anything what is not essential, you should avoid. And if you want to experiment, do this experiment in a standalone device. And don't use it where you have your uh, you know, banking transactions or your emails or even your personal family pictures, right? So, so try avoiding using them because they can always you know, extract this data from your devices. Any other questions, Amika? That was a good question you asked. And the other thing, right? I mean, since I'm on this browser, you all can actually go to Facebook Help Center. Right? Can you see here? Are you able to see my screen? Yes, we can, yeah. Right, so if you go to Facebook Help Center, it says account settings. There is also something called a login and password, and they have the privacy. So, so if you click on privacy and security, they have all these questions, right? Check up, photos and videos. So I think you should actually spend a little bit of time trying to understand how this, when you log in also, they have the options where you can actually go through it and you know, enable, disable. Right. So, so some of the stuff which you post, you can actually restrict it to certain friends. You don't have to, you know, show it to everyone, right? And when you post, are you posting within your friend circle or you're posting to everybody on the internet? So make those choices. And also you need to ensure that you upload only pictures what you need to upload. If you don't need to, then don't do it. I remember somebody used to say that saying, is it kind, is it true, is it necessary? You need to ask those questions in every action you take. Because if people have access to your pictures, they can actually take it and misuse it. They can morph it. Sujit, there's another question. Uh, is uh, mm -hmm. Casper Sky safe? Kids a good software to use. Yes, it is. It is. It is a good software to use. Anyone else having any question? Uh, we have another seven minutes left. Gimpal, uh, do you have any question on chatbot? I think. Uh, No, Chamil, there is no questions. Anishka, thank you for posting uh, those comments. That's just one question. Popped there is up. A yes. one more. Yeah, one more question came up. What is the best? Authenticator. I mean, you can use Google. Yeah. yeah, you can use Google Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator. Both works. Uh, 
uh, I would like, uh, why don't you all open your cameras and just, I know it's after work, it must be a little tiring day, but it is a very valuable session. If you could open your cameras and mics and please raise your questions, uh, um, kind of opportunity that you would hardly get it. And please do raise any doubts, any clarity that you need. Because it's only a few more minutes. Also, it would be great that if you can take a photograph of everybody just for the records of yeah. the... Uh, yeah, that would be lovely. Yeah, I'm taking it right now. If you can just open up your cameras. You would like to see more picture, more, more uh, live. More images. faces, yes. More faces. You need to fill the screen. Yeah. <laughs> so while while Samuel does that, I think uh, Dimple also made an observation saying, you know, ask all questions you need to ask now. But I would like to extend an invitation saying, if at all, whenever you have a question, you can always reach out to me. I shared my uh, mobile number. You can WhatsApp me. And I have also shared my email ID. And you can also take the opportunity to connect with me on LinkedIn. I like with my experience, he's very kind. You can easily connect him to him through LinkedIn because many years ago, before I met him in this forum and the previous forum, I have connected with him through the LinkedIn and he has been very supportive and very informatic person. So not only on cybersecurity, if you want in the IT industry, any kind of information, he is well conversed with the IT industry, ethical hacking and so on. So you will be able to get a good uh, knowledge and always follow him in LinkedIn, which you will get more information and uh, join his webinars, which will give you more understanding, especially you youngsters, especially youngsters uh, who I have seen like, you know, like, you know, who has been in the, um, uh, IT industry, which is just you are getting into the industry. So it's always better to be connected with veterans like uh, Christy, sir. Dimple, thank you so much for your kind thoughts. Much appreciated. Dimple, if you don't have any question now, we can wind up. Yes, we can wind up. So uh, we will, uh, since uh, the time also getting little uh, like it's almost real. we are reaching nine o'clock. So I would like to invite the chairman to uh, convey his uh, gratitude and vote of thanks for all the uh, participants who participated for this event, as well as for our key speaker. It's over to you, sir. Thanks, Dimpa. Thank you so Ramika. much. Uh... Yes, sir. It's over to you. Uh, yes, first of all, let me thank all the participants. It's, it's really because the, uh, okay, we have very less participants, about 40. It's gone up to about 45. So comparatively, the, the audience we have is relatively low participation. However, I really appreciate all your time you invested here because you can carry this message across your circles. I think I hope you realize what a dangerous world we are living in. How, ex how dangerously we expose to the outside world to various risk elements surrounded by us in a friendly way, in a nicer way, sweeter way. So that's the reason we invited uh, the, our IT group, uh, we SLP, TBI, IT group people, professionals to organize this for the Sri Lankan community. So let me, first of all, let me thank uh, Chamil Mali and uh, all our IT group uh, committee members, those who have done a great job introducing such a nice professional who explain everything in a very simpler, very uh, user-friendly way uh, for us, especially giving us a Sri Lankan flavor 
in typical sri lankan way we understood everything in very friendly very uh, harmonious manner thank you so much uh, uh, all our it group uh, committee members and the president chamil mendis uh, let me take this opportunity to thank uh, mr sujit kristi thank you very much sir thank you so much thank for you so your much. valuable time it's a, it's a really brainstorm I mean, brain blowing session i think for me i know a little bit of it now in that i learned so much more uh, even i had a bad experience i, I had a very narrow escape that's the reason i uh, start uh, uh, exposing uh, i mean exploring the situation you know i mean i organize i request my company to organize that one so then i my company organized such a, a similar session but compared to that the highly paid professionals who delivered that session and this pre seminar session delivered by mr sujit kristi is like sky on earth you did it exceptionally well and i so am much. sure that we all received very well including myself we received it very well thank you so much uh, mr kristi this wonderful session and also we may not able to leave you alone for sooner i discuss already with uh, chamil malli we want to organize similar session tailor made to suit our teenagers the children sure. because now they were the most exposed uh, members of our society during the because the covid so called uh, distance learning or virtual learning procedure so they were exposed left and right so they do not know the danger they are walking on walking through so we want uh, you to give your valuable time we kindly sure. request you any time any time to help children. you will be there so especially we are focusing our focus center is the dubai dham puzzle it's not limited to dubai dham puzzle children it's open, it's open to all globally all sri lankans as well as the because especially as children so you are free to talk only on english because generally kids are very good in english much more right. better than us so you'll be more comfortable with the kids so with that note once again i thank everybody who helped even by uh, thinking of this uh, the event by even uh, uh, spending one second towards the uh, betterment of this uh, event because we will after the event we will share these slides which mr kristi uh, demonstrated to us and please send across your communities explain them the danger we are uh, how bad we are how vulnerable we are how exposed we are so then they will participate to the future events actually you know it goes to my own family because when my wife when i invited to her so please join with me okay she said okay wa hagila hagin inla mata kele denna ko that's the way we believe that this is not my problem we believe that okay it or the business uh, security and it's not it's not my problem so it's somebody else problem but today we are highly vulnerably exposed to the uh, world it and we all at risk so therefore each and every one of us has a duty to protect oneself as well as the others please spread this news across the society to go learn more and more about how to protect yourself because uh, in recent past is about maybe 6 month uh, like chamil mali i was exposed i had a very great escape because if i gone one second more than my uh, time then i'll be maybe just losing my entire wealth whatever i earn saved here so it is that close so lot of people crying silently crying because they lost so many things like they, they lost their private life they, they lost their wealth so this is very important to know about the cyber threats cyber security with that note i conclude this event once again i thank all the IT, our slp it group as well as the our resource person very kind very humble gentleman mr sujit kristi thank you very much sir thank you sir and gentlemen good night yeah good night good night